up to another good, good morning. Time to go. Oh, we are all looking for adventure. We are all looking for adventure. We are all. Welcome back to the Three by Five Live podcast. I'm back. Jesse's back. And on this podcast, we talk about mindset, productivity, wellness. And a few weeks ago, we talked about a sled that Gosh. I was purchasing. And Jesse said that she never knew that I actually purchased a sled. So this was the power of the podcast. We got to listen to it to confirm that I said I was purchasing it. However, okay, we're not getting into this right now. I can't believe you even brought this <laughs> up right now. <sighs> he was very vague when I was like, you didn't buy one. And he was like, maybe. And lo and behold, uh, we, we bought a we, sled, we, friends. We re-listened to the podcast to confirm that no, I, I don't said. think it was a confirmation. <laughs> it was a pretty strong confirmation. I don't think it was a confirmation. You should listen back and then give us your feedback. Because oh, I believe man. that. I thought that this was just a hypothetical but we have a sled. And we do have a sled. And this week we're talking about focus. We are. And attention. <laughs> and and attention. reclaiming our attention. Yes, which is a very hot topic. This it's interesting. A guy that's a pretty successful guy I chatted with, I would say like a year ago. And he's like, What is interesting to you? And I think he thought I was going to say like crypto, Bitcoin, something like that. And it was right after I read um uh what's his name? Um I'm blanking. I don't know where you're going. Tell me the title of the book. Uh, Deep Work. Uh, Digital Detox. Digital Detox. Deep Work. And... Cal Newport? Cal Newport. There we go. Thank you. I feel like that was Cal's work. I know. That was a very long delay there. Yeah. Uh, So it was right when I was into that and I was like, focus. Like, attention. I think that's going to be a lost art in the future. Mm Mm-hmm. And here we are full, full circle a year later. And we were, I was listening to this podcast on the way up to the Poconos um, a few weeks ago. And I it was um, Reagan Chatterjee, Dr. Reagan Chatterjee, who is a physician out of England who was interviewing Johan Hari, um, who just finished a book and wrote a book about how to reclaim your attention. And I just thought that some of his statistics and kind of his journey into this discovery of um, these factors that are external factors that are constantly pulling us away from our focus. And then what do you do about it? Like, what are some ways to get back your focus and your attention? So, I mean, right off the bat, he interviewed over like 200 leading experts on attention and focus. And, you know, what they were looking at was always like an internal compass of focus. Like we we are always punishing ourselves like for our lack of focus and like our, our inability or inability to be like productive or whatever it is, but we really do have a lot of external forces that are yeah. going against us. And focus today looks completely different than what focus looked like 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Um, even in his uh, podcast, he started off with the statistics of they interviewed and did an average of um, focused attention for college students. And it was like 65 seconds was the longest amount of focused attention without being Why? distracted by something that a college student could could right. maintain. And they said even like the average though, the mean was 19 seconds. So that's like, think about every time your phone dings, every time your phone buzzes, every time someone, you know, something external comes, it is always distraction and the ability for our brains to come back to focus after that, it takes sometimes upwards of 20 minutes before you regain that same focused attention. For adults, working adults, it was like something like three minutes um, of focused attention we usually have before we get distracted by something. And if you don't set up um, a system or things in place that will help combat that, you constantly are being pulled away. And so what normally should take you, let's say an hour to complete, it's taking four or five times the amount of time to complete one task because of all these external distractions. And to Jesse's point, it's it's not your fault. Like no. it's not your fault. And that's what we, we beat ourselves up about. But there's so many, you know, be, behind your phone, there's 10,000 engineers figuring out how to get your attention. Right, and what you're focusing your attention on, which was is another piece of that, and why we become so addicted to things like, you know, Facebook and social media. And I mean, that has to do with like your brain psychology of negative negativity bias, right? Like they, the research that Johan Hari uncovered was that, and which we know is that we will keep scrolling when we are interacting with 
negativity and hate and, you know, um, just very dark kind of posts that we spend more time scrolling through those than we do positive focus and positive um, and posts, which is kind of an interesting thing to think about. But when you talk about the idea of like, what does this affect? So if you're thinking about like, he talked about deep focus activities, and I, I kind of paused it for a second. I was like, what are deep focus activities for, for us? But I would like to think it's like when we spend time with our families, like those deep focus moments with our kids, right? right. Or yeah. he used the example of like reading a book, like these deep focus activities, it's going to become a lost art because the ability to focus on reading a book is going to feel like running up an escalator that's going down. Like it's going to become harder and harder for us to sit in silence and solitude without distraction and complete a task that requires deep focus. And hold on, let me put a pause on that. When you're engaging with another human, and there's somebody that can focus and engage and they make you feel present. Like you can feel that in your soul. Mm -hmm. Someone that isn't attached to their phone or just has, has the wandering eyes and whatnot. And like, that's a powerful skill set. Mm -hmm. And it just is almost excites me that knowing that like to tap into that, knowing that it is being a depleted skill. Which used to be easy to do. Absolutely. In the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. So how do we get back to that? I mean, and yeah. he argues the point that there's kind of three layers to this onion. It's that individual self of like paying attention to where is your focus going? Where is your attention constantly being hijacked? And then that awareness piece that we talk about all the time. But he also talks about the social implications. So first, with those individual friendships, relationships that are so important to you, are you truly there? We talk about the idea, my definition of being present is that your head and your feet are in the same place at the same time. That is a really hard thing to do because of this constant attack on your focus. So that your friends and your family, they, they deserve that. And so what are you putting into place when you go into those social situations where you can limit that distraction. And I'm not just talking about from your devices, from your phone. That's that monkey mind too. The, right. the, the idea that you're not truly present with a conversation because you're thinking about 50,000 other things. Um, and then I loved him, how he took it one more layer about like a societal issue, like as a society, which the goal from a society and a community is to be able to be problem solving entities of a greater whole. And when your attention is, is completely hijacked from you all the time, how do you do that when you're working with a whole community of individuals to like elevate or, or create something mm -hmm. because all of you are experiencing this simultaneously. So this has huge societal impacts as well. And you can see it. Like, I don't think it's a coincidence that our society and the way that we're interacting with each other over the last few years has kind of like hit the rails a little bit. And so right. it begs the question of what can we do going back to that individual basis to then do something that also serves the collective? Yeah. And another thing besides where we're talking a lot about technology right now yeah. um, is, is sleep. I mean, we're sleeping an hour less than they did in the 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. And nutrition obviously we talk about nutrition on here and processed foods and sugar spikes and caffeine spikes and what that does for your how you're showing up and how you are able to focus on things when you have these highs and lows and, and you don't have a more steady energy mm -hmm. um so it's something like we need to take it back uh, yeah and so there was a lot of suggestions in the book one thing that he talked about which i was actually gonna i like texted it to brad because i was like i feel like we should look into this is called a k box which is like a box that he said he used to put his phone in and it has like you put the amount of time you want the phone to be in there so let's say it's like four hours or two hours or one hour brian and i try really hard that when he gets home from work at 5 30 we try to be off phones off and away between 5 30 and 8 when the kids go to bed but like this is a physical box that locks and you you cannot open it unless you smash the box. And I know that that sounds really extreme, but I also feel like in order to get into this habit of just putting the phone down, don't have it in your bedroom when you sleep at night where you're constantly getting distracted by the pings, put it out of your, your room, put it on airplane mode so that you really truly have that quality sleep that then sets you up for focus the next day. The other thing he talked about was starting in slowness, the yeah. lost art of being slow. And that could be doing something like meditation or mindfulness, which we talk about when you program. And what does he call it in the thing? Uh, internal, uh, uh, your internal, in, your, your internal thermostat. So if you, if you meditate in the morning, do yoga, Tai Chi, you're that slow activity is setting your internal thermostat to like just slow down the pace for the rest of the day. It creates that cadence first thing in the morning. 
which I think is is so true for me. The days that I don't meditate, I do feel like the world is speeding up so much faster. My reactions are so much quicker. And just taking that moment to be slow first thing absolutely will carry through the rest of your decision making and anything that's like thrown at you stimulus wise. How are you responding in a way? that is more focused and has greater attention. Yeah, so it's a revolution. We gotta take we it We got back. it, let's do it. You know, and because it, technology is only gonna become better. It's only become gonna become more addictive. Um, and we need to take it back. We need to take back our attention there. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to own our sleep, our nutrition, um, because if we're gonna live a more fulfilled, happy life, when we're there and actually realizing what's yes. happening. And when we can actually engage in conversation mm -hmm. or talk to our kids without 50 things flying through. And we're we're both guilty for this. Um, but it's something that we're constantly working on because the rewards are just priceless. Mm -hmm. And a bigger conversation and one that obviously we don't have time to tackle today, though, is thinking about how this applies to our children and our families. Like I work with students all the time. Yes. I'm with my kids all the time. And I'm so scared to see what's happening with this. Um, I, I don't want to say like addiction because to, to their phones, but there really is like this like um, feeling of separation anxiety that happens yeah. when they put the phone down. This like ghost phone syndrome where kids keep reaching for it even when it's not with them and the dependency piece of it. And when we talk about our kids not being able to focus their attention, we're training them at such a young age, which we didn't necessarily experience. So not that we we're going to talk about this today, but that's something to think about. If you model it for yourself first, it becomes so much easier for you to have conversations that are deeper and more meaningful with your kiddos if you are showing them by example. So start with you and then maybe we'll dive into a little bit more about what we can do for our kids and how we can get their attention back and their focus back to what's important as well. Yeah. All right. So that's it that's for this week. If you have not subscribed, written a review, uh, it helps the podcast a ton. We would greatly appreciate it. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, subscribe, like there, um, and have a fantastic week. Absolutely. Take care. Hello, world. Wake me up to another good, good morning. Time to go. Oh, we are up.